So what you want to do with your customer is you want to frame your proposal in a way that they perceive it. Okay, um, thank you so much guys for coming in. We are officially starting off. Um, so this is um, the Ready Learn Speaker Series, uh, which is um, actually something that we came up with from the Ready Learn Digital Marketing Training. Um, what we want to do is actually, um, as Ready Learn, we say that we help young professionals grow faster together. So um, what we mainly mean by that is that we look to actually help um, anyone who is um, in university starting off to actually get the kind of um, skills and learning experience that can help them be able to um, grow in their skills and also be able to get a job as fast as possible because it's really hard to get that first job and we know it. So this is actually part of us just bringing people in, um, bringing amazing people in to just start this discussion of how can we be able to beat that threat of um, being productive, um, building our skills and getting that first job. Um, so for today, I will be your host. Uh, my name is Liana Rutere. I'm the program lead for Ready Learn. Um, we'll be working with Gideon as well, who is our business development manager. And on the side, we have Clara, who is our guest for today. Um, so I'll just introduce her in a bit. Thank you so much, Clara, for joining us. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, Clara is a business. Uh, she's actually worked in very, with many businesses. She's a digital marketing expert, a content strategist. Um, she's had so much experience around content um, and also um, she has this amazing um, program that she actually runs. So it's called the Africana. Um, you can find them on Twitter, on different spaces, and she has amazing content growing. Um, one of the things that I love just seeing uh, about Clara is that she actually mentions that um, she she's able to combine um, entertainment and education to create actual content that helps her actually um, help her clients meet their goals, right? So she's very big in creating content and she's had done it for a long time. She knows how to do it well and that's why we brought her in just to demystify the process. Um, so thank you so much, Clara, for just being here and um, being willing to actually share with us your genius, you know? Um, we're yeah, really looking yeah. forward to it. Thank you. So as part of our series, what we'd like to do uniquely is start off with a story just to be able to help you guys to connect with um, what we're doing today. So the topic of the day is around how are you able to create compelling content, content that, content that is attention grabbing. So um, we just want to tell you about someone who is called Joseph. So I'd like you to just listen in to his story and see if you can relate to it. Okay. There we go. So Joseph is actually um, a student who is in university. He's been doubling in writing um, just to earn a passive income. Um, so he was a student. He's actually a student right now in a public university. And because of COVID, he actually isn't able to um, go on with his studies because it's online. So it's not been that fluent. He's been looking for jobs for four months and hasn't got a job that's paying him well. And so he actually decided to um, turn to his passion of writing, right? Because in high school, he was that guy who um, he would actually be able to give letters to his classmates. So whenever you remember those kind of stories where you'd hear people are coming in with a letter um, asking you to write for their particular sweetheart, he was that guy who had all the lines. And later on in university, um, whenever people wanted something to be done, especially around assignments, he was the guy to go to to be written for assignments. So um, having experienced this rant for four months, um, Joseph was actually thinking and saying, you know, I've been doing writing all this time, you know, why can't I use this skill, right? I'm not getting a job, but I have this passion and I could actually see there's something sustainable I can do based on this, right? So he decides to actually look into copywriting for business clients. Um, he reached out to a few friends, finally got a job uh, one month down the line and with a finance company. So he was in charge of writing copy for social media and managing the blog, but he was having mental block. Um, and he couldn't know how to approach the topic of finance in a relatable way because it's, you know, it's finance. It's not something really easy. And to bring it out in a way that would uh, bring out the unique personality of the company he was working in. So um, I don't know how many of you actually relate to this, 
But for us, we had so many stories of people who are writing, people who are digital marketers, but especially writers who relate to this in terms of that mental block, trying to actually figure out how can they create content that would appeal people, be relatable, and even help um, a business achieve its goals. So I think I'll just ask um, Gideon to step in and, and just guide the, the conversation and introduce Clara. Um, I think what I'd ask is that if you have any comments, so you, you guys actually asked questions, we'll keep them in mind. If you have any questions, you can actually um, put them in the chat or find us on Twitter, read the plan, and you can actually just tweet and we'll find you if you can just put a hashtag there and we can actually collect all your statements or your learnings, um, feel free to share. So I'll, I'll be in the chat as Gideon leads the conversation. Right, thanks so much, Lillian. So um, I think you did a really good introduction uh, about Clara. And I think uh, for today, I know Clara prepared a presentation. Uh, are you going to be sharing that with us today? Or are you ready? Oh, would you like me to buy you some time? Uh, okay. Um, that is Lillian. Sorry, guys. Uh, Lillian, you need to. Ah, okay. Cool. To ah, yes. sorry. Here we go. Zoom is beautiful like that. Hi, guys. Yes, I would like to take you guys through the presentation I had. And it will also tackle a few of Joseph's challenges um, that you've stated. So would you like me to go ahead and share my screen? Okay. Uh, hi guys, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much for giving me, me your time. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for you to share on your end? Because I can't see option for sharing the screen. Okay. Sorry, let me do that. Okay, go. Cool. Uh, here we go. One minute. Um, maybe you can tell us right. a bit about yourself. Uh, your so, as, so far. Yeah. Yes. as you're projecting. Yes. So my name is Clara Rinchuni. I, so today, let me first start by introducing the, what we'll be talking about today. We're talking about um, creative writing. Um, this encompasses copywriting, how to create um, content that's impactful, content that's attention grabbing, content that actually achieves your business, um, your business needs, and how to grow in the industry, um, how to have a work-life balance, especially if you're looking to work in the advertising space. Um, that's where I currently work. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about. So to introduce myself, um, I have a couple of hats that I wear on and off. Um, and maybe to start uh, off with what Lillian said, my story and Joseph's story is interlinked because um, when I was younger, I used to write a lot. Um, when I was at that, when I was very young, my dad used to work um, in Marsabit. And at that time, I don't remember phones and I wasn't so good at reading and writing because I was very, I don't think I had started the primary school system at that time. So my mom used to write letters and she'd ask me to say what I wanted to tell my dad. So I had the whole week to think about, okay, what am I going to tell that on Sunday when mom is going to take the letters? So I think that's where my art of writing started. In high school, I used to write for people letters, uh, poems, sometimes we even used to write songs. Um, then I went to campus, I did IT. Um, so all through, um, all through life, writing has been a part of just my day-to-day, -day, but I thought it was normal. I thought, I mean, everyone writes. Then when I was in campus, uh, one of my internships I did at Kwani Trust. And Kwani Trust is a publishing firm. 
Panachas is a publishing firm based in Nairobi. They usually do um, series of African stories. Um, the late Binavanga uh, was the one who was pioneering the organization, and it was a very interesting space. Um, it was the first time I actually saw people who are being paid to write. It was the first time I was ever paid to write. Like, just write what you think, here's money. At that moment, I didn't know, but it defined me. So fast forward, I uh, finished my university and I started working in an advertising agency called Bean Interactive. And um, I started with uh, copywriting. That copywriting grew into uh, digital strategy. That grew into training other people to do digital and copy. That led to consultancy with small businesses who can't afford an agency. Um, because you know, it's the reality of things. A lot of my friends have startups. This startup has potential and the money that you have right now has to go into building the business. However, you have a friend who can help you build that business. So I'm that person at the moment. So um, that's what I do in my consultancy, also my nine to five. I also have a platform called Africana where I share experiences um with young people just for instance uh, conversations around finance that we otherwise would never have had if these people didn't share their insights conversations about taking risks in business etc so that's who i am um and i'll talk about the professional journey as the presentation goes i'm waiting for you to share the screen i don't know Right. Yeah. Uh, I think Lillian is on in that. Yeah. I was just oh, okay. Awesome. There we go. So, yeah, let's go down to the part where we have the ground rules. Um, so, before we kick off, there are some ground rules okay, cool. that I've gone through. Yes. First of all, have fun. Um, I'm asking you to show up, not to just show up on the Zoom list, but to show up with your experiences, to show up with your insights of what you've gone through. So as we tackle a few things, you can share questions that are true to your experience, then we can tackle that as we go. Ask questions, and it's a safe space. So we can give examples, and I also trust that with the examples that I share, uh, we use it to better our knowledge. Um, yes. So let's kick off. Um, I thought to start the presentation with the big picture. You know, where does copywriting fit in the big grand scheme of things? You know, um, and then we also understand the purpose of the story. Uh, so the first thing we do is uh, create a strategy but to do that you need to understand the brief um, the brief being um, Lillian runs Ready Learn right um, and this is a platform that is uh, fusing education uh, with industry experts and bridging that gap okay um, so you're getting to, you want to get new students. Then we understand the context that you're working in. So what is the true brief? You know, you translate the business, we translate the business objective into human, into human terms. So for me, when a customer like Safaricom comes and tells me, why is Njoro not buying airtime worth 50 bucks every day? What's happening? You know, then now we go into searching for the truth. Um, what's the truth that the customer is facing? Um, COVID happened. My kids have been at home all the time. So my spending has gone up. So you ask yourself, or are we buying airtime? You know, so you, you start to understand the truths that are happening in the different contexts. 
then you look at the category, right? You ask yourself, what's happening in the telco category that's making people spend less, you know, at this time, maybe when we assume they should spend more. Then you look at the culture, what's happening in the culture that's making people not spend that 50 of, you know, is it a movement of less screen time? Um, so there's a challenge going on, to guys saying the less screen time you have, you get points. That's happening and that's affecting your sales, you know? So that's the search of truth. Then once you know the truth, you define the problem. The business will say the problem is we are not making money. But you as the writer or you as the thinker, you understand the problem is that Joseph is not making enough money to be able to spare that 50 ball. Why is Joseph not, I mean, what's the root cause of that problem? And if I can solve that problem and free that 50 ball, Joseph will want to spend it on me. You know, I solve a problem for you, you buy from me. Um, then we go to the strategic story. So now that you know this is what Joseph is facing, and this is the product we have, and this is how our product will solve this uh, Joseph's problem. So what story do we use to sell this? I'll give you an example. You can have 10 facts, right? So, okay, so this is a glass of water. The glass is glass. Um, there is the brim, um, it's round, it has water. However, um, since Joro's problem, I mean, uh, Joseph's problem is health, what if we package um, cashew nuts in the glass and give, when we're selling the glass, we give the cashew nuts to solve the health problem. You see, the story is not the glass, which I intentionally wanted you to buy. The story is I understand you need, you need a healthier option, right? I'll give you that healthier option with a glass, you know. <laughs> So that's how you go about uh, choosing the facts to present um, when you're looking for a good tale. And then um, lastly, I need you to move. Uh, so lastly, there's the power performance. So how do you measure the impact? And then uh, that goes into things like media, that goes into things like reporting. And it's so that stuff like sentiment reports that go into the power performance. But uh, for this presentation, we'll focus on the first three, right? Uh, so we go on. Uh, guys, if you have questions, uh, just keep them coming on the chat. So what I explained is just this in a nutshell, right? So you define your problem. And then once you define the problem, what's that transformational goal? You know, um, when Safaricom is developing a product um, for hustlers, the transformational goal is that you're able to keep running your business. We know the airtime is not just airtime. The airtime is you connecting to your supplier. The airtime means your kids get school fees. The airtime means rent is paid on time. So you get that transformational goal. And that truth enables you uh, to have a creative proposition. And so we'll talk about the um, uh, creative proposition on the next slide. Um, and I titled it The Art of Copywriting, because I believe it's an art. Uh, please let's move to the next slide. Right. Okay. So we've talked. Yes. Yeah. We're good. Okay. We're good. So we've talked about um, understanding the beef from both a business side and the customer side. Because remember, in this equation, you are the one who, who's speaking for the customer. 
you're the one who's speaking for them and you're speaking to them, you know. So internally, you're the one telling the business, listen, your, your, your customers feel like this. Your customers are talking about this. Your customers are experiencing this. And this is how best we need to position this message. Then once done, you're turning back to the customer and you're telling them, guys, I understand you. We're in the same boat and we are here to help you, ETC, through your communication. So remember the, the double role you have to play. Then you translate that strategy into a story that the consumer just doesn't, it's not just resonating with it, especially with the digital world. You need to have a story that the consumer wants to hear again and again and again and again, because your brand is here to stay forever. The reason why Nike is, Nike's marketing is so impactful is because the message is impactful. Every day, there's no day that the phrase just do it doesn't apply. There is no day, you know, every day you're faced with situations where you push yourself to do it, you know, you you just do it, you know. So in as much as um, the story should resonate with them, it should be a story that your consumer wants to listen to constantly. Then now you create a content framework. So you've decided that maybe, okay, the story is just do it. And we're looking at situations where it would be the easy route out to quit. However, if you did it, it would change the course of um, humanity or it could change the course of a life or a community. Then now the framework looks, divides that into themes. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a big theme that would run through a year. So when we're looking at the content framework, I usually divide it into hero, um, hub and help. I'll type it, I'll share the presentation. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Can, yeah. So um, the main reason guys consume content online is for three things. Either to be inspired, either to be entertained or to be educated. Those are like everything falls under, under the three, three clouds, you know. Um, the big piece of content, uh, the TV ad you see constantly, constantly, is the inspirational piece. It's the piece that makes you feel like Safari Com is a pal. You know, it it makes you feel like you know we we connect this person, this brand is the future. That's the the big piece of content is what makes you think Tesla is the future, you know. Then we go into the entertaining um, content, which I call hub because it's engaging. It's like a hub, you know. Um, you create small nuggets of content that are similar to your inspirational piece. So for instance, if the theme of the year is pushing boundaries, right? And the thematic has shown a video of how made people who would have never made it, made it because they pushed their boundaries. Then now for the hub content, I look for people who show that in their real lives. You know, I look for um, someone like, let me look for a popular person, someone like Elsa, who by all means, um, people would have rated her out but she pushed those boundaries. Then you create a community that keeps talking about the belief of the brand. And because the belief is so strong, when I go to the supermarket, the only thing I want to buy is that thing I believe in. When my friends are talking about um, 
brands they love, I'm there advocating. You know, when a friend says, you know, I've been having challenges with this and this, the first thing that comes to mind is, let me recommend this brand. The tests of things might, if someone puts um, sodas without the can, you might never know which brand is which. But sometimes in your mind, you rationalize those things. So you divide um, the content framework um, to guide you into those small um, hubs you create. Then you also have to create content that educates your consumers on how to consume your brand. So for instance, if you're a telco like Safaricom, you always have to create content that tells people, Dell star 444 hash. You know, a lot of people find it annoying, but it makes it easy for you to remember, you know. By the time something like numbers stick in your mind, you have to expose the consumer. We usually call it priming. You have to prime this person, prime this person. Uh, you know, if I can use number four in the artworks and make the four dance, the more times you see the number, the more likely you'll remember. Um, so, yes. Then, before you start your process of creating the actual scripts, do your research, you know. Um, find out what your customer is saying about those things. Because um, how, how I speak about things is how I perceive them. So what you want to do with your customer is you want to frame your proposal in a way that they perceive it. Example, if you're selling, um, if you're selling an umbrella on at Roslyn Riviera Mall, you will say, hi, madam, uh, I would like to sell an umbrella. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you're, Selling an umbrella at Moy Avenue, you say, Sister, bro, bro, you get. Because when you start saying, Madam, who's going to know on Moy Avenue? You know, <laughs> like people are busy. Someone is trying to con like to distinguish you between you and the and the conda. So you frame your message in the environment that it's in. So you research, for instance, if you're selling banking products um, or insurance, how are your customers talking about it? How is the insurance agency talking about it? Find a medium. And then what I usually do is find, so in every strategy, there's a target audience. So for instance, the target audience for um, the umbrella on the street is someone who commutes probably with matatus because I mean you have to pass through Tao every other time to see my products. Um, and so that person, why why do they want an umbrella? They so that you don't get to work dirty. See, you don't want to get to Jobo, you're looking like you've been through the Amazons. So the way I you position the umbrella is different from someone who has, has a baby, you know. For instance, if you notice a woman has a baby, the best way to position the umbrella is to cover the baby. Because that's the thing that's most important to her. You get. So find out where their mind is, relate to them in that perspective, solve their problem, um, enhance their life. Then research, write. Research, rewrite and keep on refining. When you think you have it, read it out to someone who's in the target audience. You know, if I'm looking to sell umbrellas and I have a script for an umbrella ad, I look for my pal who jobs. So I'm like, would this, if you had this in a month, would you feel like you want to buy an umbrella? Then they're like, mm, sounds like this to me. I tweak it. So, and then even as the team sees it, they give feedback. So the writing process is always continuous. Um, then, after you do the writing, 
and you do the work, you guide the creative process because you're the one who thought about all these things. You're the one who knows your customer, you know. So when artworks come and videos are being shot, be there. When actors, be present in the process. When models are being chosen, be there. When makeup is being done, <laughs> be there. When the shoot is happening, be there. Because what happens is the ideas are amazing, but when it comes to execution, drops, uh, balls drop. Why? Because the person who knows the customer best wasn't there when they were choosing the model. Maybe the model looks nothing like your target audience, you know. So when people see your ad and your ad is trending on Twitter for the wrong reasons, be there. <laughs> be there throughout the whole process. Um, and then as your, the thing with creative writing is on connected you are. Yeah. It's like relationship. The more you know each other, the better the relationship, you know. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, I really like the comments coming in. Thanks so much for engaging. Um, yes. So let's talk about growth. 